Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to start talking about tile rules, and uh, it's actually going to be like a three or four part tutorial. And in this uh, in this first part, we're going to discuss prefab creation and tile rule setup. Yeah. So before you can actually use the tile rule system, you have to create the prefabs that represent the tiles that are going that you're going to be painting inside the grid. Now, I already have the, all the tiles uh, created. Um, all the tile prefabs uh, created and I've lined up some of them here in the um, in the scene view and uh, The first thing I want to do in this video I want to show you we're gonna go left to right and I'm gonna show you how to create each one of these uh, prefabs So let's go ahead and switch to selection mode then uh, I'm gonna go to the prefab manager and drag and drop this uh, base 01 prefab in, um, in the scene uh, When I release the left mouse button notice that it starts snapping to the grid I can left click to commit and now let's uh, create the railings and the pillars. So railing and decor. Drag and drop. Press Y to rotate. Hold down Ctrl Shift and use the mouse scroll wheel to move up. And there you go. Now press Ctrl B to duplicate. And now let's uh, handle the pillars. Drag and drop. Ctrl Shift, move up. Snap into place. Ctrl D. Now select both of these guys, Ctrl D again, and uh, yeah, there you go. So we now have the first style uh, created. Uh, actually, we, we only uh, created the objects. We haven't we have we haven't created the prefab yet. So right now, all these are just objects in the scene, but we need to turn them into a prefab that we can use. So let's go ahead and select all of these objects. Uh, click on uh, the Create Prefab button inside the Prefab Library Manager. Give the prefab a name. I'm going to call it TR Bridge. Uh, good. from tutorial select the destination folder I'm gonna select the tile rules tutorial folder now make sure when you're creating prefabs that are going to be used uh, with as uh, tile rules make sure you have the pivot set to tile rule here and finally we have this field called pivot object name so the pivot object is basically like the main object inside the tile. In this in this case, it's this uh, floor object, which is called base zero one. It's uh, it's gonna usually be the the object that sits on top of the grid, yeah. Uh, and um, if you leave this field empty, the plugin will actually pick the object with the greatest bounding volume. So in this in this example, we could leave this field empty, and it will automatically detect uh, the base zero one object. But let's go ahead and um, because sometimes, for example, you might be dealing uh, with tiles that have similar volumes, um, and you might want to. You, you, in that case, you will have to uh, specify the, the name of the pivot object manually. So let's go ahead and uh, say right base zero, base zero one. And now uh, let's go ahead and click on create. Oh, actually, no. Before we click on create, just make sure that all the objects are selected. Okay, now I'll click create. Okay, and it automatically highlighted the prefab asset that was created. So uh, there you go. This is our uh, this is our prefab. Now let's uh, move on to the second object that we have. I'm going to press Alt R to switch back to my inter to my plugin interface, and we're going to create this guy. So. Now we could, for example, we could duplicate the floor object by pressing Ctrl D, but I don't want to do that because when you duplicate object, it will change the name to, you know, it will append the uh, parentheses and number. Uh, you will use that format with parentheses and number. So I don't want to do that. I want to uh, because then uh, when we enter the uh, when we enter the name of the pivot object, uh, we have to all keep changing the name. So what I'm going to do in this case, in order to avoid any errors. I'm going to drag and drop the prefab from the prefab manager and it will have the uh, base01 uh, name. And now we can uh, just uh, duplicate these other guys, uh, the railings and the pillars. Press Ctrl D, duplicate again Ctrl D. And now notice that this prefab is closed off along the z axis, along the positive z axis. So let's go ahead and press Ctrl D again. I'm going to hold down Shift and Y to rotate all the objects around uh, the center and uh, hold on Ctrl and snap into place. Now we have, uh, we don't need, we can delete two of these pillars because two of them were already there. And there you go. So now let's uh, do the same thing with uh, this guy. I'm, I'm actually going to delete these objects here. Uh, we don't, we no longer need them. We have a prefab created for them. And now I'm going to select these guys. 
uh, create prefab tr uh, cap now uh, the uh, tr underline stuff is just a convention that I use you don't need to I mean you can use any name you wish this is just uh, what I like to use so title base 01 everything looks okay let's uh, go ahead and click on uh, create tr cap there you go that's our uh, that's our prefab all right now we can go ahead and delete these objects let's go ahead and create this one okay yeah I shouldn't have that let's actually undo because I want to have the railings uh, available so I can duplicate them yeah this is the T junction so uh, I'm gonna duplicate that press Y to rotate snap it to place and let's duplicate two of these pillars press ctrl D now press D to activate modular snap and snap them into place there you go I'm gonna press space and shift space uh, no, sorry, actually we need to be in modular snapping. Okay, space to disable highlights and shift space to disable the uh, hints. Okay, there you go. So we now we have another prefab. Uh, actually, we have the objects. We don't have the prefab yet. Let's go ahead and create the prefab. You already have the window open. So let's uh, say TR T junction. Tile rule base 01. Great. Okay, there you go. And finally, we're gonna create the turn uh, prefab. And we need a rounded railing for uh, for this one. So let's go ahead and go to the railing and decor and find the rounded railing. I think this is the one. And it also actually it also uses a rounded corner so uh, base go to base and I think base rounded this is the one I'm looking for let's rotate it, it it's not necessarily to rotate it but we wanna like I find it more intuitive when it opens along the positive x-axis so let's go ahead and place it here and now press D to activate modular snapping for the railing press Y to rotate it Control shift use the mouse screw wheel to snap it into place okay to move it upwards snap it into place and then uh, let's go ahead and go to uh, the pillars Control shift screw wheel Control D duplicate there you go okay so now this is our turn prefab select create prefab tr tr turn and click on create okay great okay so now we have the prefab it's not all the prefabs that we're going to be using but I just wanted to go through the process of creating some of them this, this the process is similar for uh, all the prefabs that we need um, I'm just gonna delete these guys and I'm also gonna delete the prefabs that we have here okay and now what we have to do is before we can actually uh, paint which we're, we're gonna do in the next video uh, we need to set up the tile rules so basically a tile rule uh, defines the way in which tiles connect to each other inside the tile grid so we need to go to uh, tools G spawn windows and click on tile rules now this new window will pop up and we have a uh, plus icon right here a plus button so let's click on that when we do that notice that we get a new item in here and uh, we have this button grid um, this middle orange tile represents any tile inside the grid that is evaluated and these represent the um, adjacent tiles the neighbor tiles now you can left or right click on uh, on these tiles when you when you left click it the tile turns green which means that the orange tile opens up towards the green tile towards the towards the tile that that is that is green Right. now if you wanna close it off in a certain direction you can right click and this means that the orange tile is closed off in that direction that means so when it's red it means that no tile is allowed to be there uh, when it's green it means that a tile must definitely be there and when it's neutral when it's gray um, it, it doesn't the plugin doesn't uh, doesn't care yeah so it will treat the gray cells as uh, doesn't matter Okay, now let's uh, let's go ahead and create a tile rule for each of these uh, 
prefabs that we uh, we actually have uh, created. Now, actually, I'm gonna use uh, I'm actually gonna use the prefabs that I have in the uh, that I created before the recording. Uh, and I'm gonna so I'm gonna drag and drop this style rules folder right here inside the prefab library manager. All right. So let's start with uh, tr bridge. I'm first gonna drag and drop it right here. And notice that this style opens up along the positive and the negative z-axis. So if you look at the sing gizmo, you notice that, uh, or you can actually use, uh, you can actually look at the grid axis. You notice that it opens up along the blue axis, which is the z-axis. Now, this grid of buttons right here um, is basically uh, its its uh, horizontal axis maps to the world x axis uh, to the world x axis that is the red axis and its vertical axis maps to the world z axis so because this style opens up along the blue axis we're going to have to turn these two guys green and now we're going to take the tr bridge prefab and drag and drop it right here in the prefab drop area all right let's go ahead and delete that guy um, Hmm. Actually, you know what? Uh, let me create. Uh, I'm gonna create a new profile. It's it's always uh, good to keep things organized. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new profile. I'm gonna call it uh, MS Dungeons. Click on create, and uh, let's uh, repeat uh, the process. Okay. Now click again on the plus icon to create a new tile rule. And this, guy, this time we're going to use the TR cap prefab. So let's go ahead and drag and drop it. You don't need to drag and drop it in the scene before you use it, but I'm, I'm doing this in this tutorial in order to show you, um, in order to, to, to make sure that everything is clear. So uh, we can see that uh, the prefab opens up along the negative Z axis. So I'm going to check the tile at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, so in the, uh, in this image space, the negative Z axis points downwards, the positive Z goes upwards left is negative z and right is positive z all right now i'm gonna drag and drop it right here let's go ahead and create another one uh this one is going to be uh let's say uh the t junction prefab which opens up along the x-axis in both directions and along the negative z axis so we need to check the left and right tiles and one at the bottom and the prefab let's go ahead and add another one for the turn yeah. So the turn opens up along the positive x-axis and along the negative z-axis. So we need to check this guy and this guy. Drag and drop. There you go. Okay. And finally, we also need. Um, we didn't cover the creation of this one because it's actually quite simple. The, uh, you know, a cross prefab. So it's a it's a rule that is established when uh, that is activated when uh, the tile is surrounded by four adjacent tiles horizontally and vertically. So we're going to use the so-called TR cross prefab for uh, for this guy. I can drop it right there. Okay, so now at this point we have enough uh, in order to actually start painting. And this is what we're going to do uh, starting with the next video. Right? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.